for the at-home investor, though, who's maybe dealing with some individual stocks, you know, trying to do the, the, the safe thing and stick with maybe ETFs, um, bond funds, et cetera, uh, w without getting super complicated and getting into tail risk hedging, what, what do you do to, to mitigate risk in this market? What do they do or what I do? I mean, what yeah, I do what is do something very do? different. The universe is about a very... Yeah, I know what you do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, they can't, they can't, they can't, they can't get the kind of explosive downside protection that we do. This is hard. This is the derivatives markets and everyone should really stay away from that. Um, it, these are weapons of mass destruction for, in the wrong hands, certainly. I, you know, I think it's enough for people to just be realistic about their risks, realistic about their risk mitigation strategy. What, what are they trying to get out of it? You know, it's something to think about in terms of gold. Gold is very similar in terms of Universa. We're kind of siblings. They just are, I would think of, I think of gold as sort of the runt of that litter. It's less of a payoff. So what are we expecting out of that in terms of protecting our systematic exposure? S same for bonds as you bring up. So people just need to be more re realistic about that. You know, risk mitigation should not be, should not be a cure for risk that's worse than the disease. And that's what it's been uh, in, from modern portfolio theory. Uh, Mark, what can you tell viewers about your investing, your mental discipline, once your returns crossed 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, up to 4,000 percent? I mean, how did you uh, have the fortitude to stick with it and not turn tail sitting on a huge cushion of gains? You know, you don't sell insurance on your house when you smell smoke coming from the kitchen. So we, we, have, a, we, we have a very, we have a larger place in our our end users portfolio than just some you know allocation to some some hedge fund that's just maybe adding some alpha you know knock on wood to their portfolio but we, rather what what an allocation in universal transforms the rest of the portfolio it allows the rest of the portfolio to take more risk they should take more risk because a small allocation in universal dramatically slashes their risk so we we don't have the we don't have the luxury of of trying to pick bottoms in the market or timing the market but there's a natural monetization process very systematic natural monetization process in, in the way we run our strategy. So, so you know, we, we, we insulate ourselves from these things. Uh, Mark, I just wanted to get uh, your thoughts uh, to follow up on a comment you made a little bit earlier where you said that uh, the administration is essentially complicit in this boom-bust cycle that we're experiencing, uh, given kind of the cheerleading, uh, in your words, of the, of the central bank. And as we've, you know, chatted on and off throughout the years, I know that you've been pretty steadfast in your belief that, you know, the markets are in a bubble, and a lot of that is uh, accelerated and accentuated by some of the actions taken by the Fed. So I'm curious, since, since we haven't heard from you um, in this forum uh, since before the pandemic, you know, what do you make of the central bank's latest activities uh, with regard to propping up, uh, you know, the financial markets, propping up, uh, you know, small businesses and, and meant to shore up the economy during the shutdown? It's very destructive. It's very, very destructive. It feels good. It looks good in the short run. They look like heroes. But the long-run effects of this stuff is very, very destructive. And so, you know, it's the broken window fallacy. We see that we're, we're they're repairing these things, but we don't see the things, we don't see the opportunity cost of the things that lie around the corner, which always lie a corner at, from, uh, from credit bubbles. And, and we're also not, we're not paying attention to the massive disparity of, of wealth that's being created when we, when we inflate these financial markets. It's, it's unconscionable, really. All right. We're going to leave it there. Mark Spitznagel, Sp Mark Spitznagel, apologies. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you.